Hi guys, today we're going to be talking about the Kinesis Advantage 2 and how to program it. Thank you again to Kinesis for sending this through the brand new Advantage 2, which is a programmable keyboard. Now, one of the best features about the Kinesis Advantage 2 is that it has full programmability. That's to say that there's a way that we can turn this keyboard into a drive that our computer can see. Before we get into the programming, let's just see how that V drive works. Well, the first thing you have to do is go to Kinesis' website. Then you have to go to the Advantage 2 resources. Once you're there, you go down to Advantage 2 keyboard user manual. Now, this is different than the thing that you get when you open up the keyboard box. The keyboard box comes with a quick start guide, which is like two pages long. This one isn't. This one's like a, a monster that's like 37 pages long. Okay, so of the 37 pages, page 19, 20, and 21 are the ones that are probably going to be of most interest. Okay, the first thing that we need to do is enter power user mode. And you do that by pressing program, shift, and escape. Now that we're in power user mode, we press program F1. Okay, so as we can see, this has now set up the Kinesis KB as a virtual drive. Now, as you can tell, I'm doing this on a Mac, but this would work on every different PC, uh, Windows, Linux, and Mac. Basically, it turns the keyboard into a virtual drive, hence the name V drive. So all I have to do is double click it and open it up just like a regular window. Okay, great. Now we've opened it up, we can see that we have two different things that we can look at here. First is firmware. Now, if you want to update the firmware, this is the way you do it. You get the latest firmware, you drag it in here, everything will be sweet. With Active, you can see that there's some stuff in there, and that's the stuff that we're going to be talking about. There's a, a file called Do Not Edit, which we're going to say let's not edit that. There's a Dvorak layout, a QWERTY layout, a state layout, and a version.txt. Now all we have to do is open these different files and start editing them. Inside state.txt, you can see there's some basic configuration tools that you can use to set this on. Uh, toggle tone off, key click tone on, uh, thumb mode windows, you can change all of this stuff. And the startup file is qwerty.txt. So here's qwerty.txt and you notice that it's empty. For quote simplicity, the only thing that it would be in here is things that we've already done. Okay, so I'm just gonna shut down the V drive now We'll make some changing on the mapping, and then we'll come back in to the qwerty.txt to make some edits. Okay, in order to put something into that qwerty.txt file, we need to do some onboard programming so we can understand how it works. One of the things that I thought would be useful is changing this control button, this one, this control button, into a shift so that I can, as I'm typing, change that into shift rather than trying to do it with my pinky. Okay, so what you do is you press program F12. Now you can see that it's blinking. What I'm gonna do is press the destination key. That should change the way that it's blinking, it did. Now I'm gonna press the map key to shift, which I did, and I should be done now. The rapid blinking tells me that it's done. All we need to do to exit the programming mode is press program again, and we're done. Now, this is shift. Before we go back into the V drive mode though, I just wanna do a quick little macro. I find macros very useful, uh, doing stuff like entering my username a lot. Uh, let's just go ahead and do that. So what I'm gonna do, all we do is program F11. That sends that rapidly blinking. I'm gonna do control H, slow blinking, and now I'm doing ski. program and now I just do control H and it spits it out now there was a problem there is a problem rather on the poker 3 programming that when you press it uh, it spits it out 
uh, as long as you're holding that down. Uh, that is not the case here. Uh, this, as many times as you press it, it will just spit it out. It doesn't matter uh, if in the middle I try to do some typing, it won't register those key presses until after the macro is finished, then it'll start to recognize the key presses again. Okay, next up, let's go back into V Drive and just have a quick look at exactly what the macro and remapped key looks like. To get back into power user mode, it's program shift escape. Then you press program F1. So inside active, we're gonna go to QWERTY. And now we can see exactly how this works. So L shift is greater than L control. That means when I press L control, that what I'm going to get is L shift. With right control and H, I'm going to get this pattern printed out. You can see it's Ski with Pete. So let's say I wanted to add something in there. For example, I want an underscore at the end of it. Now I know what I need to do is do this and then save this QWERTY file. Now that I've saved it, that will be put back in to the Advantage 2 and it'll be on the inside of the firmware. What that means is I can now make macros much quicker using QWERTY.txt and the V drive system than I can with actually typing it out. It also means I can make much more complex strings. I'm told that this can take up to 200 characters at a time. So if you have a tweet that you like to put out, which is only 144 characters, uh, you can set that up on a macro. You know, one of the interesting things I like to do on my other programmable keyboards is do a basic default HTML layout. Now, I haven't counted the characters, but that might be something that you could do inside of those 200 characters. All right, guys, that's how you program the Kinesis Advantage 2. Thank you very much again to Kinesis for sending me this sample board in order to uh, figure this out and share this with you guys. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to hang out with me today. Don't forget, if you found this video particularly useful, you can buy me a coffee in the About section below. That helps support this channel and helps provide the equipment that I use to record. If you really want to support this channel, of course, you can do so on Patreon. I really appreciate the guys who help me out on Patreon. Thank you very much to those guys. Again, thank you to Kinesis for sending this board through. Look forward to playing with it some more. As I'm sure you guys could tell, my typing is still pretty slow on this thing, but that's because I haven't spent enough time with it yet. I am looking forward to doing that soon. Thanks again, guys. Don't forget to check out my other keyboard-related videos. Don't forget to check out my Raspberry Pi-related videos. Don't forget to press subscribe and press like if you thought this video was useful. Looking forward to hanging out with you guys again soon. Thank you.